In this video, I want to compare independent with dependent sampling. So, in both cases, we imagine that we're trying to understand a distribution, which I'm going to call T, by sampling from it. Firstly, if we think about the independent sampling case, then the idea is that we imagine we sample, let's say, one value. For example, this might be 1.3 from the distribution. Then we sample another value, and we might get a different value, which is, say, 3.7. The idea with independent sampling is that the only connection that these two values have with one another is through their joint dependence on t. And apart from that shared connection that they both come from the same distribution t, there is no additional link between these two. If we then contrast that with the dependent sampling case, then the idea with dependent sampling is that we first of all sample some value. Let's imagine that we start at the same place, 1.3. Then what we do is we use that location to generate a new sampling point, which is somewhere often that's near to that point. So we might generate a value here, which is, say, 2.5. The idea with dependent sampling is that because we're using this first sample to generate our second one, there is actually a link between these two samples, which is not just due to the fact that they're coming from the same distribution t. Indeed, with dependent sampling, we can imagine apportioning the incremental information for an additional sample into two different sources. There is a part of the information which is due to the fact that these samples are coming from t, but there is also information which comes from the previous sample. If we contrast that with the independent case, well, there is absolutely no link between the samples here. The only thing that an additional sample conveys is information about t. So we get the entirety of the informational content for an additional sample is to do with distribution t. So because of that, we obtain more information for each additional sample about t if we use independent sampling. Examples of independent sampling are the algorithms like rejection sampling, the inverse transform method, which relies on you having to know the cumulative density function, and finally, important sampling. There are other methods, but these are the three most common methods for doing independent sampling. For dependent sampling, the predominant method is known as Markov chain Monte Carlo, and that's very common in applied Bayesian inference. And that's often abbreviated as MCMC. But there are also other dependent sampling methods, for example, sequential Monte Carlo. An analogy that I want to provide to distinguish between independent and dependent sampling is to imagine independent samples as sort of parachuting in. So because they're parachuting, each of these samples that we obtain doesn't depend on the previous one. And so we can imagine that a parachute regimen to take a given hill would parachute in and that would allow them to take the hill or, or move to new territory relatively quickly. Whereas by contrast, we can imagine a infantry soldier group who move around this landscape by sort of walking or running. And so their movements are much more local. And where they move to next very much depends on where they were in the previous step. So just to consolidate this point, I've created just some simple animations in Mathematica. Forgive me if this is a bit patronizing. But we can imagine independent samplers as being a parachute regiment. So the way in which they would advance across territory would be to parachute in. And because each of these samples doesn't depend on the previous one, they're able to cover territory that much faster than with a dependent sampler. We can contrast that with the dependent sampling case. And in the dependent case, the soldiers move on foot. And because of that, they move locally, which means that the amount of territory they cover per unit time is that much less than an independent sampler. And so it's a much less efficient way of covering terrain. I now want to show some simulations which illustrate the difference in efficiency between both of these algorithms. So here, in each of these plots, I'm showing a, an equivalent number of samples from an independent sampling algorithm 
for those with a dependent sampling algorithm. Here I use Random Walk Metropolis for the dependent sampling algorithm, which is a variant of MCMC. And the distributions which I'm showing here are the histograms of all the samples when I'm trying to sample from a two-dimensional normal distribution. And what we can see here is that as I sample from both of these sampling algorithms, that for an equivalent number of samples from the independent sampler, the dependent sampler distribution is that much less crisp and has that much more noise in it than does the equivalent number of samples for the independent sampler. So we can see here that after we have 20,000 iterations from both of these algorithms, that the independent sampling distribution here is that much more indicative of a two-dimensional normal than is this rather noisy landscape that we see here in the dependent sampling algorithm. And whilst I've used a simple example here to illustrate the differences between independent and dependent sampling, these differences hold for more complicated examples. Dependent sampling in general is much more inefficient than is independent sampling. And a way of gauging that cost is through the concept of effective sample size, which I describe in a different video.